Dick. Yes, sir. How you feeling? I'm feeling fine, thank you, sir. Hope uh, you are. The gum that's doing good. Dick, uh, I want to ask for your judgment on a very confidential basis. They're baiting the hell out of us every day on this Maddox thing. I don't want to get involved, and we just dodge it and run and hide, no comment. The president doesn't know anything about it. Well, you now, Weltner know. came along and made his statement, and they're baiting them again this morning. Maybe too late now, our 11 o'clock briefing. Bill Moyers has to go through with it. And I told him to just avoid any comment any way he could. If he had to make any, just say, well, I was under the impression that Welkner, I, I knew nothing about his resigning, and I know nothing about the situation, internal situation in Georgia, but I thought his service was useful in the Congress. Oh, I'd say he's a young congressman. He was. Well, he's a hell of a nice boy. He's making a terrible of a mistake yeah. on this thing. He ought yeah. to stay up here, but uh, he's got worried about the situation there in his uh, home uh, county. I would gather that with the Maddox and Republicans joining up on him, he figured he might get beat. With the two gang in him, he, he, he be in a, in a dangerous position, but uh, I don't think he's Fred exactly. He just borrowed, and he's that kind of fellow. I knew his daddy is. Forty years ago, I got his father to uh, draw the uh, 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 reorganization act that made me famous in the state and been my big uh, uh, political mainstay up till now. I'm sorry, personally, because I like Charles. I think he's a very promising young man, a very capable young fellow. I'm, I'm sorry he's quit. Now, what, did you, what is a good thing for a person to say? We I don't just, want to hit at anybody. We don't want to endorse anybody. I and just said uh, that I, I thought Congressman Mullen was a young man of great promise, and I regret he wouldn't be in the next Congress, and I'd leave it there. I would go right. the details. Now, what, when you get on Maddox, what do you say? Well, I... Uh, I don't know anything you can say about Maddox, uh, except to well, take one of the nomination down there. Can we just say that uh, this is uh, a... Yeah, I'm going to have the same thing with every governor. And I just, if I could say something that uh, uh, the, uh, this is a matter for the state to decide, and they've decided it. Uh, uh, I'm not familiar with the record of the, the individuals involved. I think that'd be the best thing to say. I just think it's, of course, it's up to the people in Georgia to elect the governor. That uh, you had plenty to do without getting involved in the 50th gubernatorial campaign. I want to get in the thing where I'm hitting at Maddox. At the same time, I don't want to get in the thing where I'm embracing him. Well, I agree with you there completely. Maddox, if he's elected, ain't going to be as bad as he uh, sounds. He sounds impossible because he's a, Maddox is a hard way fella. He had to, Leave school when he's 12 years old, carry three paper out to help his mother support his two young uh, brothers and sisters. He's a, and he made a lot of money and he made it the hard way and he felt like it was his and he did raise hell down there at one time, but Mike's is really a, a, a very religious, uh, God-fearing man. He, he prays over everything. He teaches the uh, men's Baptist uh, Sunday school based class in Atlanta there. Uh, I don't think he'll be, if he is elected, which is doubtful now, I don't think he'll be as bad, really, as Galloway would be. Because Galloway, of course, got a, more culture and $50 million back to him. And got a lot of education at Uncle Sam's expense. West Point, Sam Scott resigned one year before he fulfilled his commitment. <laughs> on the ground, his father's health made it necessary for him to go on. I like Bo, he's a nice fellow, but if I just had to take a choice between the two, I'd take Maddox. It looks like we've got out of that. I knew they wasn't going to elect Arnold, because the people outside of the city just never have had any consciousness on Arnold. I never have been able to put my finger on the reason for it, but I, I knew it was that. And uh, he, he would have just had to carry the city completely solidly to a one. Now, one other thing. Uh, on our appropriation bills, our revenue is running very well. Uh, we don't want to get any ruinous inflation, and I had all the Democrats down last night from the Finance Committee, and they wobbled around and quarreled a little here and there, Fulbright and others, but I would gather that uh, Dirksen says he's helping, that they'll report this bill and get on because we're having a bulge of orders, and if we postpone it, why, we'll... 
we'll uh, go we up to six, 62 or three bit. We, that's right. Mike said he was going to help, and Dirksen said he'd help. So I assume that's it. Now, I want to act as quickly as I can when I know these appropriation bills. Do you have a sense or feel, like you always do have, for the Senate? That's what they will do on things like your poverty bill and, and your other uh, I know, sir, there's so many education have, uh, and stuff. These candidates have assumed the potion so much greater than I ever thought they would or should that, that I, I no longer can analyze the Senate. They come up with uh, new adherence every time they have a vote over that, Jelly. Uh, ordinarily, I would think the Senate would cut that bill back to your budget figure. I asked the Mansfield and Dirksen to offer a motion for both of them and point out that the budget had jumped from 98 to 113. That we had five or six billion worth of the Great Society stuff. We'd eliminated old projects to get make room for it, but we had done it in education and poverty. Had a billion seven fifty. 250 more than we had last year, and we really have less need for it this year than we had last year because we got a lot better employment. But uh, Dirksen said he'd do it. Mansfield just grunted, didn't say, never could get an answer out of him. But that's awfully key, that and the education. Because if we overdo this thing, the people will abolish them and get them out of the way and yeah, get there. Sure will. Uh, if Mansfield would take the lead, we could cut that thing back to your budget without any trouble. I worked there ever since you called me before. I took that military medical assistance bill over here, and I cut it 60-odd million below the house and 20-odd million below your request, but I got a better bill because I good, good. worked on the most liberally you signed it yet. Yes, I did. Yeah. Will you uh, say a word to Mansfield, just kind of encourage him a little? Say, let's stay on the budget. The budget's going to be 115 as it is. Uh, the... Uh, We've, he's gone over, you see, with the pay and GI Bill and military aid and those things, and it's going to be. Just tell him it's going to be. I think it ought to be cut back, and damn him, he knows it ought to be. Cut. You're chairman of appropriations. We've talked about it. We've talked about it in the policy committee. Well, if he and if he and Dirksen would just uh, do it uh, and uh, offer it, I, and just on the theory that I sent up 113, it's already 115 to 16, already down here. Uh, so it's that much. Now, if you go to adding three quarters billion on poverty, then education. This poverty is sitting over there just waiting. Well, they got, of course, they added a billion or something. You know, they, in the, in the oh, education, he had two billion. Wayne did on the authorization. Well, we got to cut that back because well, the budget's coming to hell. It will be when you get But it. you're right up against this other one today, so you say something to him. All right, I'll Thank work on it. Now, listen, yeah, I haven't bothered you or anybody else. Uh, uh, there's a little project down in Georgia that I never would have mentioned thought about, but they told me it was approved, and then later they withdrew their approval after I'd notified the people it was approved. And I've gone into the project. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, who ought I call about that? Marvin Watson? Yeah, well, Jake's here now, and I'll get him. If you'll give him the name, I'll put him on, and he'll look at it. Here's Jake Jackson. Wait a minute. A, uh... Yes, sir, Senator. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the uh, Georgia Furniture Manufacturing Corporation in Dublin, Georgia. They want a loan of a million, a hundred, a million, 